Alrighty, before we get started here, let's see. Let's go. Got ZBrush open here. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the uh, MatCap guide. So we're going to just kind of pick up where we left off. It looks like we're getting towards the middle bottom here. So that's moving, moving along pretty well. Uh, but first, just in case you guys missed it, let's go over a little bit of the um, the Houdini VDM and the Houdini uh, GoZ. So if you haven't seen that yet, let me start picking up my links here. Yeah, there's a link to my channel. Let me see here. And also let me make sure... Uh, I do read the YouTube chat. Thanks for showing up. I think I've got three chats coming to my restream. So we've got YouTube, we've got Twitch, and we've got Periscope, I think. All right, so anybody just joining us, if you haven't yet, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can check out the Houdini stuff. So we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna get into the stylized rendering. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. And uh, let's do this real quick. Let me go ahead and let's try something new. So I'm gonna go out of Lightbox here. And we'll grab a Sphere 3D, go in Edit Mode, hit BI, Brush Insert, Insert Body Parts, hit M, and we'll grab this dog head. Let's see how this dog head does. So if I hit X to go across that symmetry here, make Poly Mesh 3D, then I can just drag out this dog head right down the middle. Actually, you know what we could do? We could just hit W to go into gizmo mode and then we can just cycle these things out. So if we wanted the dog head, we can just select that and then hit Q to go into draw mode, turn on our floor. And this is where I'm gonna make sure I'm Z forward and Y up. So Y up is the green and then Z forward. There we go. Um, another thing we're gonna need to do is make sure this thing is watertight. So I'm just gonna go to modify geometry, close holes here. And I'll go ahead and close all of my holes. Now I think he also has a mouth in here. So if I go in here and hit R, and then control drag. Oops. There we go. Actually, it might be a little bit easier if you use uh, the transpose here. And then you can just drag these transpose lines where you want. Um, the gizmo will do it too, but I'm just uh, more used to dragging. There we go. Dragging along this transpose line. Although, you know what? It also might be easier if we just go into our move brush here. And we'll go into brush, auto masking, and then we'll do mask by topological range, 1.5. And then we'll go ahead and just kind of pull down this mount. The only reason I'm doing this is so we can show the undercuts on the vector displacement map. Preferences, edit, turn off the line cursor to surface. There we go. So uh, while we have this open, uh, we can use GoZ to go ahead and send this through. So if we go over here to GoZ, uh, that'll go ahead and throw it into Houdini, but first what we need to do is go into our Start GoZ, open that portal, and now we can go back here. We can just hit GoZ, go back into Houdini, and that'll load that up. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Cool, yeah, we just started here. And before I get into the stylized rendering stuff, we're going to do a little GoZ Houdini stuff. So now that we have this, you'll be able to... Uh, drill down into here, and we'll go ahead and go to File, Import, Houdini Digital Asset, and go ahead and grab the Houdini VDM Vector Displacement Plane. Go ahead and install that. And now that I have that installed, I can start, hit Tab, start typing in Vector, go to Create Vector Displacement Plane, link those up, and then hit the blue icon to go ahead and start uh, rendering that. So you can go ahead and apply any arbitrary object to that vector displacement plane. Um, like I went before, and you know, if you're just joining us, go to my YouTube channel here. There you go. And you can check out uh, a little bit more, not not really more in depth, it's all pretty simple stuff, uh, but you can kind of look at that. Uh, so in here you can change your clip depth if you want to, so you can go here and you can kind of just drag this left and right and kind of push that in and out. 
to kind of get more or less. If you want to put the ears in there, you can kind of just push that dog through until you start seeing the ears there. Um, but I'll go ahead and just leave this at zero for now. You can also go through here. If it had UVs, you could do original. That would be the UVs. You can go in here to flatten, pelt uh, if you want to. You want you change the the UV method that it's using. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at flatten. And you can also change the um, resolution. So I'll turn it down to 128 <coughs> while we're working so you can kind of see the geometry a little bit better. And now you can go in here to rotate UV. You spin around to the back here. You can kind of see as we rotate the UV, it's going to give us a little bit of a better result. You can kind of dial in how you want those UVs rotated. There you go. So now we got our dog head projected through there. Um, you can do the blur border amount. You can kind of just kind of blur that transition out a little bit, but you know, the default seem to be working okay. And the UV blur amount, the blur border distance, all that good stuff. So I'll go ahead and go back up to 512. If you want to over crank it, you can go all the way up to like say 1024 if you want to. And that'll just add more resolution. Now before I came over, what I should have done is probably subdivided that mesh because you're getting a little bit of faceting from the dog head. So you can do that as well. Uh, let's just drop this down to 512 here. And if we need to export this, we're gonna hit tab. Go into Go Z here. There we go. And then uh, if we want to shoot this back to ZBrush, just hit the Send to ZBrush button. That'll go ahead and load that up in ZBrush here. I guess we can go ahead and maximize ZBrush while we're not doing stylized rendering. And then we go to Brush B C. And if you want to, it's right in the middle. So you can hit X to go across that symmetry and you can blur these transitions as well. You can also go over here to your deformation menu. Uh, you can smooth those transitions with a smooth brush and then you can go or and or you can go over here to like relax your plane grid and you can kind of just relax that plane grid just a bit. Um, so and you can you can mask your head out if you want don't want to lose detail first and then you can relax the plane grid. It's probably open circles probably the more like that and just kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, but once you're happy with what you've got here, then we're going to go to B, C. We'll go to the, just throw this into our chisel brush here. So we'll go to chisel 3D. And then you're going to see we've got a bunch of meshes up here. We'll go to our brush from mesh. That'll go ahead and throw our dog head in the vector displacement. And then at that point, oops, B, C. There we go. And then we just go ahead and drag our, and as we drag our dog head out, I'll go ahead and uh, looks like it's something's masked here. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. But you know, you have your vector displacement without having to go in and do a whole bunch of work uh, to get to your vector displacement point. So that was the VDM. And again, if you're, um, I guess I can link you guys directly to that playlist here. That'll be under the Houdini and ZBrush playlist. We'll throw some more stuff in there. And I also go into like shattering things. So you can like, if you want to make, uh, for example, you know what, let's do something fun. So we're going to go into uh, standard brush mode here. And let's go ahead and load up the tool here. Go ahead. There we go. Uh, let's grab Nick Z's humanoid here. It's Nick Zuccarillo. And uh, let's go ahead and go over here to layers and we'll go ahead and bake all. Oh, that's another thing too. If you haven't yet, go in here to Z plugin. Um, I don't have it installed at home. I haven't installed at work. There's a, they just released, let's see, Pix. Uh, Pixlogic Download Center, the ZBrush plugins here. I'll go ahead and link you guys to that. And if we look down at the very bottom here, there's going to be, here's your panel loop presets that are back. There's also this clean tool master. Uh, this has a bunch of actions you can apply to all your meshes here and Z startup master and all these other things too. Uh, but these are the two I probably use the most. And then the clean tool master here, I can go through here and I can say bake all the layers to all these meshes and a bunch of other things you can do. So you can install those as well. And we'll go ahead and delete other. And let's see if this will work. So I've got this mesh here. If we, again, if we want a more subdivide, I can hit Control D. That'll subdivide him. And then if I want, when I send it over, it's going to send over to the lowest subdivision so I can modify it and then it'll import it back using Go Z. If I don't want to do that, just hit Delete Lower. Uh, so now I can go, the, go Z this over here. And before I do that, I'll just go ahead and make a new scene here. There we go. ZBrush, Go Z. So we'll go ahead and send that over to Houdini. Where did he go here? Let's see if we can, oh, he's really big. No problem. Okay, so 
Uh, now what I can do is, uh, let's see if we do, um, let's go ahead and move him up. So there's a couple different ways I could do that. Um, I can use this selection tool and this little handle tool to go ahead and pull this up. And you also see when I do that, I, this raises the translate up. So you can just type this in too, if you want to type in like 85 or whatever. Now I go ahead and raise him up and you can tilt him down or whatever you want to do. Um, the first, and then we'll go ahead and make a collision uh, ground plane here. That'll make you an infinite ground plane. And actually, we probably need to scale this guy down a bit. Let's go ahead and I think the ground plane is infinite, but um, you know what? Let's go. Let's make this a little bit more friendly. We'll go down here to deformation unify. Actually, that change him at all. Let me see if I append. This will be interesting. Cube. Okay, so he fits within that cube here, which is about what I'd expect here. Let's see how this works. File, new, discard a new. It probably, it probably won't matter. I'm just wondering. Let me oh, I just put him right at the middle, which is fine. Okay, so yeah, again, we'll select him and then we'll go into our handle here and then we'll go ahead and drag him up. Maybe tilt him to the side and forward here. And we'll go over here to our collisions here and we'll turn in, throw in a ground plane. Whoops. And let's go ahead and go into scale here just in case. Or is that a terrain object? Actually, let's just see if it works. Okay, so. Um, let's go to shatter. So we're going to go ahead and select this guy here and we're in the object mode and then we can go over here to model. We're going to pre shatter this guy. So we go over here to shatter him and that'll go ahead and break him up into these different pieces here. So if I want to, um, I can go into exploited, exploded view under here. So if I start tabbing and then exp loaded, we'll go ahead and drop that in. And then if I want to see this exploded, let's go ahead and turn that on. And there he is in kind of an exploded view, so I can kind of see the different uh, pieces here. So we go to chunk centers here. We can go to um, total count and change that to like 20. And that'll break them up into 20 different pieces in here. And there's, you know, we, we did the two shatter methods on the YouTube channel, but this is just kind of a pre-shattering. And you can use like poly paint or whatever to kind of drive how you're shattering this object. Uh, if we like what we see here, we can go ahead and delete that exploded view node. And now you can see he's still shattered in here, um, but now he's... Um, put back together and then um, da, da, da. and then uh, yeah we got to choose this guy and make him a fractured object here so we're gonna go ahead and select him and we'll go back up here to the object mode and we'll go ahead and go to our rigid bodies and what is it RBD objects or is it RBD fractured object there it is boom RBD fractured object here and now when we play this he should hit the ground and he's really big so that's why he's running a little bit slow I think there we go and then as he falls he'll go ahead and fracture so again oh it's another thing you could do well oh, so this yeah this is the pre-fractured version so boom always fractured and again he's pretty small or he's pretty large here so if we if we like this part here we can go okay let's send that back to ZBrush and then that's just a matter of going back in here and then we can go to tab and we'll do go Z export and we'll just throw that right in here and then we can go to send to ZBrush and that'll send that over to ZBrush here Hit F there we go and now we've got our fractured body here so you could set up and it doesn't have to fall from a big height and you can also do the other method where it kind of hit and then as the bigger chunks fall off it'll hit and fracture more and it'll hit and fracture more um, but anyway Let's go ahead and preferences initialize and we'll get cracking with our other stuff here. Yeah, it's that's what time is it? It's 6:15 a.m. where I'm at. I'm in Austin, Texas, so kind of central time here. It's a little earlier in LA and um I think most of the people that actually show up are kind of in the Great Britain area. I think Cool. So everybody good? Alrighty. I've been working in ZBrush for ooh, since 2002-ish. So 15, geez, 2002, 2012, 
1999, 2000, 2001, 2002. Yeah, so probably about 15 years now. Jeez, that seems weird. Um, it was uh, as a sophomore, junior year of call at Ringling. Well, I'm not sure. Um, Pat Mike could use the, uh, Blance has a question. Uh, could you use that fracture with the VDM export? Um, you could, you could apply that to a vector displacement plane. And the reason why I did that compound vector displacement is because when you have multiple objects, like say if you wanted to, uh, let's do this real quick. If you wanted to do like a sphere 3D, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D, go into poly frame mode, go down here to initialize, um, oops. Let's go ahead and initialize that primitive first. We'll go ahead and H divide and V divide of like 12. And then we'll make it a poly mesh 3D. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of that. We'll go ahead and delete hidden. And then we'll Q mesh, poly group all. And we'll give that some thickness. And then we'll crease poly group and divide that up using dynamic subdivisions. And we'll apply that. So if you wanted to do this, plus um, go ahead and grab a sphere and just, oops, geometry. Uh, delete lower area. And let's go ahead and make our energy intensity 100. So let's say you wanted to do a compound mesh like this, and let's go ahead and rotate this around. So if we were to send this over, <coughs> in fact, let's go ahead and split that off first, and we'll divide that up. Okay, so we've got these two here. You can go ahead and go Z these um, over. Uh, let's go ahead and move this down because I just want to show you what's going to happen if it's got two pieces here. And in fact, you can send one piece over and if it has a skip in the plane, what will happen is go ahead and merge these down. And then we can go ahead and go Z those over. Let's go ahead and start a new scene. We don't need all that fractured discard and new. There we go. So when you go back here and then we hit, um, let's just hit go Z here and go back into Houdini. And now if we apply a vector displacement plane to here. Oh, you know what? I think we need to import it again. Luckily, all we got to do is it's still sit in there. So we just need to install it and then vector. So now when we do this here and we, you know, it's like, okay, so now we need to go and twist our UVs because we have two different, it's UVing them like with flatten or pelt doesn't really matter it's doing it's having to do some really weird stuff to get those uvs to work now you could uv these things separately uh manually and bring that in and choose the original option but i couldn't find a good uv pattern to get me i could untwist one or i could untwist the other but it, i couldn't untwist both because it's trying to find those uvs and um you know do that so what i ended up having to do in the demo was do one and then do the other and then put them together using vector displacement um, in ZBrush. So it's not impossible. It, it's just a few more steps, uh, hoops to jump through here. Um, but if you wanted to do projection stuff, well, I guess you could use uh, Projection Master, but that one is actually pretty easy because in if it, by projection, I mean like if you just want to project uh, from a plane, that would be something like if we do a cylinder 3D here, and we go over here to initialize. We put an inner radius in here, and then we make it a poly mesh 3D, and then we'll go ahead and group by normals, crease poly group, divide that up a couple times, go ahead and delete lower, and then we'll go ahead and turn on our floor, make sure we're Z forward here. And then if we send this over, now we can go in here, And put those up here. And now at this one here, instead of doing like a UV method that's like flat and stuff, just do project and that'll just project straight back and that'll go ahead and do that heavy lifting for you. So you can go ahead and shoot that back and forth. Of course, you could also use Projection Master and ZBrush if you go to my uh, YouTube channel here and you go to the playlist that says ZBrush for R8, what's new? We go over a lot of those methods in that one here. Cool. Cool, awesome. Thanks for everybody who's showing up. If I miss your question, I apologize. And in fact, we're about to jump into 
Let's go ahead and shut Houdini head, Houdini down. So we'll go ahead and discard and quit. And we're in ZBrush. We'll go ahead and preferences initialize here. Or you know what? Just play it safe. Let's go ahead and shut this down. So now we're going to get into the second half of the ZBrush rendering guide. So if you missed the first half, uh, go to the playlist. Did I send that out yet? Go to the playlist here. Oh, I did. Cool. Um, can you tell me how to make edge borders? I'm not sure what you mean by edge borders. Like if you want to extrude an edge. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, and you're in you if I if I take a stab at what you're asking here, if I go into geometry, let's go ahead and make polymesh 3D, and we'll go ahead and reconstruct subdivision history here. Um, you can go through here. Let's go ahead and delete higher here. Go on my Z modeler brush. So if you wanted edges, you can Q mesh out this, but you can't do a edge um, extrude. Where are we at? Hover over an edge and go to. Um, there you go, extrude right above it. You can do an edge extrude, but it's not going to probably behave the way you want. In that case, what I would do is just Q mesh, polygroup all, and just give it a plane with some thickness, and then just treat this as a plane here. So you can go through here, and then you can extrude these faces if you want to extrude that edge here. So now we're kind of extruding edges along here, and then when you're ready, um, you can go ahead and just isolate. Um, this top plane here. Let me go ahead and just grab these here. Just hold down Alt and paint those ones here. All right. You know what? Okay. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to go to the top here, and we're going to go to Poly Groups, uh, Group Visible. No, Group Front. There we go. And now we can grab this top poly group here, control shift S to shrink. Or we can go control shift and we'll just select this lasso and just get rid of that edge ring there. Now we can go to go ahead and delete hidden. And now we've got just our edges here. Um, so yeah, it's not ideal, but you can just extrude faces on a thin on a plane and then go ahead and just extrude those edges. Uh, edge borders like we see in male armor. Well, if this is an armor piece here, you would go to inset a single uh, polygroup all. So let's go ahead and just do Q mesh polygroup all here. And let's go ahead and uncrease all here. So there's here's our male armor here, all nice and armory. Um, so if we want to, we can. There's a couple different ways. What I would probably prefer to do is go ahead and go polygroup, poly loop. And then we can go Q mesh polygroup all and just pull this out to get an inset. And then we could just do this for our edge border, like so, for our armor. And then if you want to, you could just do like a crease polygroup or whatever to kind of crease that up. And then you can go in here to your smooth subdivisions here and your crease level here and kind of give yourself a little bit of, let's crease level two maybe. There we go, kind of soften that. And now these are just dynamic, so you can always hit Shift D to go back and kind of modify and make changes. So. Armor border. Uh, it's a transpose modeling tool. Not working with the Gizmo, new Gizmo tool. Um, it's it's it'll do it'll do one thing. So if you grab a cylinder here, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Um, if we take this top one for example. Why did it ruin that? Just give me my dot stroke, please. There we go. Uh, so we've masked this out, invert that mask, hit W, Alt tap, <clears throat> and hold down Control. It'll drag out an edge ring like this, uh, but for whatever reason, if you go in the middle and do like a scale, it won't bring in uh, an edge ring. You have to go in, add a, into gizmo mode here, and now you can bring in your, your edge ring here. So if I am going to be transpose modeling, um, probably what I'm going to do is just use the transpose line. So anyway, cool. Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump into this here. So go ahead and overlap that a little bit and we'll pick up where we left off here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is looking okay. 
That looks about right. Okay, so we're going back into Guide to Zverse Comic Style. Let me go ahead and link you guys to that. So you guys can play along here. So we're going to go to ZBrush Guide UIDES.com and the tutorials here. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Tutorials. There we go. So you can get this this walkthrough for free. It's got resources in it and a breakdown of the PDF that we're going to be going through here. So if you go here. Um, question, you've got three sources of streaming. Where can I find all of the hours you stream on? That'll be, I put that all in the, um, if you go to my Twitch channel here, Twitch TV forward slash Pav Mike. Good morning, Dark and Grim. There we go. If you go to twitchtv.pavmic and you scroll down, you'll see my schedule here. So Pavmic, Thursdays, Pixelogic channel on Tuesdays. And then, um, oh, well, you know what? I should probably link you to those uh, streams here. If you want to watch my Pavlovich workshop, you can go to this link here. That's on the Pixelogic channel, and that's every Tuesday. And then on my channel, there's the live stream full episodes and all that good stuff. Okay. So let's go ahead and get cracking. And I am recording these so I can go ahead and edit these down to something reasonable when we go to the final final mode here. Okay, so uh, mixing shader and matcap for comic style renderers. So we're still with them here. In this section, we're going to be multiplying the power of a single matcap by four. And we're going to use the quad shader to build our next comic material. You'll find that there are heaps of applications for this technique within this tutorial. Concentrate on creating a comic material we can use with or without polypaint. So basically what we're going to do, when we go in here to our, whoa, let's go ahead and make this drag rect here. So we can go into edit mode here. You're going to see there is matcap materials here and standard materials here. You won't have a quad shader in here anymore, I don't believe. In fact, the most layered shader you're going to have in here is if you go into your comma key, go into your materials here, and you won't have any of this stuff either, but you'll have the double dots O metal if you double click that one. Um, let's go ahead and hit comma key to go out of that. Uh, this one here, if we go into our material settings, you're going to see underneath modifiers, you're going to have S1, S2, and S3. Uh, S4 is going to be grayed out, and that's going to be the quad material. If you want the quad material, you're going to want to go into the comic style rendering and go to the part one. Uh, we, we did this here. And is the quad shader in here? Maybe not. Let me go, let me go track down that quad shader because I do have it. So we can kind of follow along a little bit better here. Let's go to streaming, comic rendering, resources, materials. Okay, so what you can do is go in here to the super comic. That is the quad shader. So here's the Pablo Ander super comic. You can see there's S1, S2, S3, S4. This is basically what we're going to be making. You can start here and just zero out these um, options here and uh, change any of those. Uh, or you can just start here. I mean, that'll save you some time. But uh, if you want just a quad shader, that's and we're going to be following along. Let me go ahead and grab that real quick. I think I have that on my... see give me a second here there it is quad shaders Z material so if you want to know how to get this um, you know like this comic style rendering in my materials tab in my light box all it is and we're gonna throw something else in there we're gonna go to file Explorer we're gonna go to our ZBrush 4R8 folder Z materials, and then we've got the comic style rendering folder in there, and I'm just going to copy quad shader in here. So this will be what we can start out with. Um, for you guys, if you're just downloading the resources, just start with the Poblander, this material here that we're going to be making, and you'll already be done. But at least you can watch me go through it and um, kind of get to that or arrive at that. And we'll go ahead and kill ZBrush real quick and start it back up. Uh, do you have a link for the Pixelogic Twitch stream by any chance? Yeah, that'll be... Um, t 
twitch.tv forward slash pixel logic. Cool. Uh, Tiago says, uh, I'm new and I've just been following you for a couple weeks and now moving on to Intro to ZBrush 2. Cool. Awesome. Good luck. And uh, I'll thank you for your support and hope you have, hope it works out for you as far as, you know, the videos and hopefully it's been an easy transition into ZBrush. I know sometimes it can be a little bit trying for some people depending on where you started and how you learn 3D and stuff. But uh, hopefully that'll kind of ease your transition into ZBrush. Uh, okay, so we're going back through here. So let's see what he has to say about the uh, quad shader. Let's start by understanding the quad shader and defining some terminology. So the quad shader is a material in ZBrush that has four inputs, S1, S2, S3, and 4, which we just talked about a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab that quad shader that we put into our comic style rendering here. There it is, quad shader. Now, when you double click anything in here, it's going to take your default, um, you know, whatever you had selected by default, which in this case was, I think, matte cap. Um, red wax if i had to guess uh, it will replace that um, if you want these to show up every time you start up zbrush what you want to do is go to file explorer here and we'll go to zbrush for 8z startup and then materials if you throw it in here these will load up with zbrush every time you load up zbrush so just something to keep in mind so you're going to want to select a material in here that you'd like if you do reflect red and then you go into your uh, render it here and you do grab this one it's going to replace that reflect red with um, that new comic material here so something to keep in mind here anyway we'll go back to our uh, quad shaders here go under modifiers oops not that brush modifiers we want to go to material modifiers here there you go and now we got s1 s2 s3 and s4 for the quad shader here Uh, there's an in-depth explanation about this in Pob Blander's tutorial about uh, making a skin material for BPR. Uh, if you want more info, more info on that, so the four inputs in the quad shader are simple channels in which you can insert. Put that a little closer. Either a matte cap or another single shader. So basically, you can go through here and you can adjust the settings for each of these, or you can also copy. So you see that copy sh. So you can go in here to another material here. You can do copy that shader, and then you can go back in here to your quad shaders, and you can paste sh into any one of these channels and get that. And you can also mix your here's your matte cap materials, here's your standard materials. This is all standard material properties here. You can also put in a matte cap. So you're going to see the matte cap. You got depth A and depth B and all that stuff we talked about last time. Um, you can paste those into these as well, so you can kind of mix and match. So we'll be getting into that. Uh, da -da -da, let's get divide some terms. So shader for this tutorial, refer to a, a refer as a shader as any standard material from ZBrush. So the shaders will be any of these standard materials. Matte cap. Um, we should be pretty clear on the matte caps because we've already gone over that and what they are, but any shader that is driven by an image is called a matte cap. And again, just to recap the matte caps, we go to green metallic here, for example, you scroll down, this image right here is dictating how our model is being rendered in um, ZBrush. Uh, material at the end of the day, a matte cap or a shader or a quad shader is a material, but for the illustrated purpose of this tutorial, I'll call a material something made out of a combination of shaders and matte caps. Cool. And this will be a reusable shader, so once we're done tweaking the shader, we can save it out, and then you can tweak it and then save out variants as well. These are all the screenshots using the same material, but using a small value change to get all these different looks with the super co comic quad shader. And that's the one I pulled up for you guys when I went at the material here. It's the uh, Publander super comic shader there. So let's get started. First, we're going to create the basis of the material using a shader. So go to the material pad and select the skin shader 4. So we're going to start with Skin Shader 4 here. And that was just in the basic materials here, down here in Skin Shader 4. A uh, very versatile shader and is a great one for what we want to start with. This is also going to be the channel 1 of our quad shader. So we'll start by copying the Skin Shader 4. So we, when we grab the Skin Shader 4 and we've got the material loaded up over here, if you don't, just open up this little docking station over here, go to Material, grab that dot, and just drag it over here. Um, and then we've got this. Now we can do the copy SH. And now we're going to go back into our quad shader that we had loaded in. And start by copying the skin shader 4 into the first channel of the comic material. So with the skin shader 4 selected under the modifiers sub palette, you have two buttons. Do copy SH, which we just did. And now we need to go find the quad shader under the standard materials palette. 
And then once you have it selected, you'll see four channels. Uh, click the first one, which is S1, and select it. And make sure it's pressed orange, and then do the Paste SH. And that's going to paste all of those Skin Shader 4 settings into this S1 here. Uh, the little dots on each channel let it turn on and off the visibility for that channel. So if we go through here, these are all visible now. So let's go ahead and hit Control N to clear our canvas. And let's go ahead and load in probably what he's going to be using here. So we'll go to Streaming, Comic Rendering, Resources, Z Tools, and the Kepler Bust here. Go ahead and load that up. Go into Edit Mode. You're going to see as I turn these extra options off here, this is just basically the Skin Shader 4. So because we turned all of these other S's off, and you can blend we'll get to that but basically we've got the skin shader one it's on it's got an open circle if you turn it off it disappears so this one's active and it's on it's open circle and if we go back down here to our skin shader four it looks pretty much the same because we just copied those parameters into this material here so we'll go back to our quad shader that has the skin shader copied into it and now we have our base shader ready to start but before we can see what it does or how it really looks on our model, we need to turn off all the other channels. The idea with the base shader is to create the first pass or the basic outline of our comic material. So we're going to be creating an outline with this one. Uh, remove all or most of the shading and create a few subtle dark, dark contour lines. So uh, yeah, so go ahead and turn off all the other channels like we just did. Now creating a quick shadeless material with the black outlines is not hard. We could simply use the technique from the previous section and just build up a matte cap. Uh, if you missed the previous section, go to part one and when I edit these all together, It'll probably be one long video, or maybe I'll break it up into sections. We'll see how it goes. Um, the reason I want to use a shader like Skin Shader 4 is because it will give us the option to do some simple shading or specular later on if we want to. So it'll give us a little bit more leeway as opposed to baking it into a matte cap and then having to go back into Photoshop or use matte cap or light cap to tweak. Uh, we can just use sliders to kind of dictate how the look is going to go. Go ahead and turn the ambient and the specular sliders all the way down to zero. So here's the ambient, boom, and specular. Boom. So we turn off the specular, we turn off any ambient lighting that was built into the shader. Uh, doing this will get rid of any ambient lighting and leave it specular contour. So we just have the diffuse to tweak now. At this point, I like to turn on the polypane of the model or simply select any color other than black or white. The idea is that the shader should not affect the color so that we can use it on any other model with any polypaint. In other words, we're creating a material for the line work only. So for example, uh, I don't think this one has any polypaint here. So when I turn this on, uh, if you did want to polypaint something real quick, super simple, we got our standard brush here. Just turn off Z add. We've got RGB selected and we can go through here. If you want to kind of crisp up that alpha as you draw, because you're going to notice that if we go in here, let's go ahead and fill him with a little kind of follow along here. So we'll do kind of a muted green here. We're going to go to color, fill object here, and then we'll go ahead and grab kind of an orangish red here. And we'll go ahead and go through here and we'll start painting. Now you can mask first. You can hold down control and looks like he's got these things here. So you can go through here and you can kind of mask these areas first and then you can just do color fill if that's what you want to do. So we'll, we'll do that first. We'll go through here and we'll mask. Now uh, let's just keep this simple. We'll just do a couple sections here. So we'll mask this little section here. And this is a decimated mesh. So it's painting on the vertices. It's giving you vert color. So if you don't have very many verts, it's going to be a little blocky. So what you might need to do is subdivide this first. So I'm going to hit control D and that'll do our geometry subdivide. And now we've got a little bit more resolution and you're going to see you're going to get a much nicer mask and a much nicer poly paint here. So we'll go ahead and mask this in and I can do a sloppy mask first because then what we can do, whoops, Go ahead and mask down here. And we're just using mask pen here. And now to kind of sharpen this up a little bit, I'm going to hold down control alt and that'll tap and that'll kind of sharpen up our mask. That's also underneath masking here. And where are we at? Uh, sharpen mask is here, but again, control alt will go ahead and do that. If you want to blur your mask, just control tap and that'll blur it out. But we'll go ahead and sharpen that up. And now we can go through here and just do a quick cleanup pass on our mask here. So we'll go ahead and unmask all of this stuff here. Uh, if you want to, you can also go in here to your mask, hold down control, go to mask curve, and then you can use your mask curve here. You can tap alt once and then hold down alt, and that'll unmask anything past that line. So you kind of use that to go ahead and clean up your masking as well. But anyways, once you've got this kind of cleaned up here, and I'm not gonna do a perfect job here, because it's not about poly painting or masking, it's about stylized rendering. But I do wanna go ahead and show you, if you wanted to make your object look like the one in the uh, PDF here, you could do this, mask it, invert that mask, and then with this color selected and RGB turned on for standard brush, go to color, 
fill object and that'll go ahead and fill that up. If you wanted to just paint with a color here, if you go down here to black and then RGB selected, you don't have to mask, you just go in here and paint. Uh, if you want to, you can go into your alphas and you can kind of sharpen up that edge and you can also go in here to, oh boy, my screen's really small, so I can go here to focal shift and drag that focal shift down, and that'll also kind of have the effect of sharpening up your edge border there. So either one of those, or you can use both, and now you can go through here and kind of just poly paint that in. If you want to, if you kind of overshoot your bounds a little bit and you want to clean it up, just hover over this color here and hit C. That'll go ahead and color select that, and then you can go through here and just paint this color on top of your previous color. So. We've got that, we've got poly paint here. Uh, so now we're just using this shader, like you said before, just to do the line work here. So let's go back. Um, now there are some modifiers on the skin shader 4 that we don't really want to have on. So change colorized diffuse, colorized specular, and anis anisotropic diffuse and anisotropic specular, switching all those to zero. So let's start from the top. Let's go colorized diffuse here, which is this shader here. That's at zero. Uh, colorized specular is, whoops, there we go, um, so here's colorized specular, it's at 100, we'll go ahead and change that down to zero, colorized diffuse is at zero, uh, anisotropic diffuse is right here, we'll go ahead and put that at zero, anisotropic specular we'll put at zero, and high dynamic range is going to be put at one. There we go. So we'll go ahead and standardize all that. We end up with a very basic material that's basically controlled with the diffuse amount and the diffuse curve alone. We'll leave the diffuse slider at 100. So we'll go ahead and crank that up to 100 if it's not. Um, but the diffuse curve is what does the magic trick. So play around with the curve, but we're gonna roughly look for this shape here. So if you go here to the diffuse curve and click on it, you're gonna see we buy up by default this long sloping curve. So in order to make this shape, what we can do is you can, and this is just curve basics, just out of all of ZBrush uses the same curve functionality. So as we drag this around, you're gonna see it does different things to our object. Um, but to make this curve, you just drag this orange dot around. If you wanna add another orange dot, just click on that curve, it'll make you another one. Um, you can take this outer ring and kind of make this harder. You can go like sharp, sharper or softer fall off here. Um, if you want to do a super sharp fall off, what you need to do is take the dot, drag it off, and then drag it back on. And then I'll give you a super sharp uh, curve here. So now you can do kind of stepped looks like this. Um, to delete a curve, just take the dot here and just drag it off and I'll go ahead and delete it. If you want to reset, you can hit reset and just start over. And it looks like here we've got an orange dot in the upper left, orange dot in the lower lower left, upper right, and we've got two dots here. So I'm gonna take this dot here, we're gonna go ahead and do a sharp fall off, so we'll drag off, drag on, and then we'll put it here, and then we'll make another dot here, and then drag off, drag on, and we'll kind of push this out a little bit. So that's the diffuse curve that he's looking for. Now with that curve shape, you should be getting something that looks like the image below with some sharp and subtle black outlines. So let's go ahead and see if we're matching that here. And we'll turn that poly paint off so you can kind of see, we'll match this up here. So image below with some sharp and subtle black outlines, but you can also see a little bit of the volume. So there's there's nice ink, ink lines going on here that are very contrasty, but there's also a little bit of subtle shading as well. We can still see some shadows that help define the volumes, but those have nothing to do with the material. The shadows you see are simply preview shadows here. So as you know, the shadow kind of starts playing in here, that's under the render menu here. Render preview shadows. So you can do turn deep shadow on and off and you can do the object shadow. You can drag that down to zero if you want to. Uh, I turned uh, I turned the deep shadow off and the object shadow to zero. Okay, let's do it. There we go. Cool, I think this is very exciting because we managed to create this with only one modifier of a, sim of a simple shader. Since we're using the shader and not a matte cap, this means we can also affect the outline of the shadows just by changing the light position. That's another thing too. So the matte caps have lighting built in, but lighting will actually affect this object here. So that's totally cool because it's not a matte cap material with the lighting baked in. It's a standard material here. Let me get a drink here. Ah, thanks for showing up everybody. So moving right along here, 
Uh, okay, so to change the light, let's go ahead and take this light palette and we'll just drag this over here. And so we've got our light. We've got one light active and selected. If you want to select another light, just tap it once. That selects it and then tap it again to turn it on. So now we've got two lights playing in here. But we'll stay simple. We'll just have this one light selected, one light on. And now we can kind of move this light around. So we can move it over here. That'll change that. We can move it down to the bottom here. And if you move this around to the back, you can take any light and you can just tap it once. And that'll scoot it around to the back there. There we go. And that'll go ahead and just give you uh, like a rim light or it's being lit from the other side here. So very, very cool. Oh man, that's so cool. I love it. Uh, then you can just tap to bring it back around to the front here. So we'll go ahead and set that back to kind of where it was. Not only that, we can change the light color and intensity and the ambient light to quickly modify our comic book comic look. So think about the possibilities. We were only 25% done with our comic materials right here. So what he's saying is the light color here. We can go ahead and change uh, this light color here to like a baby blue. And the ambient color here, the ambient is three here. So, and the ambient light. Let's go to light properties here. Crank up the ambient. That was at three. Oh, he chose, a, he chose a green color here. I was just, I was mixing with his other colors there. Uh, so we do a green color here, and then we turn our poly paint back on. That'll go ahead and, you know, the light color is going to also affect the color that's on your mesh here. So very cool. So let's go ahead and change that back to white here and light color, light intensity. Okay. For our second channel, S2. So again, if we go back down here to the materials, we got S1 selected. Here's S2. We're going to use a matte cap. You can use any matte cap because we will modify it anyway, but I think the flat sketch 01 is already pretty close to what we need. For the following the process of copy SH and paste SH from previously, uh, bring the flat sketch 01 into the second channel of our quadrator material. So flat sketch 01 is under our matte caps. And where is that at? Framer, sketch. Uh, 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 flat sketch. Here's sketch 04. Maybe just sketch 01. Oh, there it is, flat sketch 01. So go ahead and select that one. We got S1 selected. We're gonna do copy SH, and then we're gonna go back to our quad shader here, go into S2, and now uh, we can go ahead and turn it on if you want to at this point. We can do paste SH, uh, but if you want to, you can go ahead and keep that off. So, uh-huh, quad shader material. Turn off the first shader so that you can only see the contribution of shader two. So we're gonna turn on shader two and then turn off shader one for now. Um, so the idea with the second one is to create uh, volume lines that describe the shapes and masses of your character. So you can, you'll be able to modify uh, not only the line, the inked part of it, you're going to be able to define the uh, form and shade part of this thing once we're done. Um, I said the flat sketcher one does a pretty good job, but it can be further refined. So start by turning the opacity to 100. So under S2 here, we've got our opacity at 51. Let's crank that up to 100% to make sure we see what the shader does at 100%. We're going to tweak the cavity detection and cavity transition to create lines based on the crevices, peaks, and hard edges of our model. Let's do a quick overview of what these modifiers do. So cavity detection, let's go ahead and turn our poly paint on here. Essentially, the cavity detection defines how strong or how much contrast there is between the raised areas and the crevices of the cavities. For the purposes of what we're trying to achieve, it's almost like using levels in Photoshop to contrast the lines of a sketch. So as you turn the slider on, any value other than zero, and this is cavity detection here, so it's right here. Uh, if we turn this down to zero, here it is off. So as we crank this up, you're going to start seeing the dark lines and the light lines start uh, getting a little bit more contrast. I've already mentioned that in the last section when I talked about depth A and depth B and orientation, let's just sum this up like this. If cavity detection equals zero, like so, any B slider is irrelevant as it won't have any effect. So any of these uh, depth B and uh, depth A and all these any A and B things here won't have any effect. So cavity detection has to be on for the B sliders to have any effect. So cavity detection at zero, cavity detection all the way at one. Those are the differences. Cavity transition. This is obviously linked to our cavity detection slider, but it deals with how sharp or soft the transition is between the dark recessed areas and the raised light areas. Uh, the modifier will greatly affect the look of the shader because it allows the input of either positive or negative values. This will also serve as an invert function for our purposes. So cavity transition. Uh, right now, cavity detection is at 1. So if we take the transition and go to negative 1, 
now it's mostly light with a few dark areas and we go to positive one it's going to be mostly dark with a few light areas in uh, for the edges there tip you can benefit from the B sliders without having to see the cavities you can make the cavity detection one this enables the B sliders and change only the cavity transition to zero which keeps the B sliders on without seeing any of the cavities here um, hopefully that's not too confusing. Basically we need to know about these sliders we create our comic material is that the cavity detection will give us the lines in the deep areas and the cavity transition will determine the sharpness of those lines. That makes sense. So before we tweak those uh, settings, change the color B to black and leave color A in white. So let's go ahead and go back to our model here. So color B, we're just going to drag that over here to the black and leave color A to white. Uh, we're not going to use the intensity A and B that are right below the cavity transition, so change them to zero. So intensity A and B, we're going to go ahead and make zero here. And instead we're going to use the intensity A slider at one located towards the bottom of the modifier slope set. So intensity A one. The uh, difference is the first two deal with the texture input of the mat cap and the second two refer to the intensity of the colors we pick for A and B. Um, now this is where I started having problems following along. So if you got our cavity detection here and this is up and this is cavity transition, oh, it's zero. There we go. And then here we're all set up. Intensity A is at one, B is at zero, and then these are all zeroed out. We've got this all set up and then we've got our Z texture in there which is just a gray material. Um, we also need to get rid of the texture used. So we'll go ahead and do that and select texture off. So now I need to do a set intensity one, it's intensity A to one to get 100% of the A color. Then you can play with the cavity detection, cavity transition sliders to find a nice balance between A, the white color for the raised areas, and B, the black color for our cavities. So cavity detection, cavity transition here. So here's transition here and then transition here and I'm not getting anything to show up. So this is where I kind of had to deviate here. So in order for this to kind of work for me, I'm going to grab, you know what, let's just do this. Let's go into Photoshop real quick. Give me a second here. And I'm just going to make a gray uh, object here that I can kind of just use. Let's do Control N to make a new file. Oh my goodness, I forgot I uh, changed this. Oh yeah, da, 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 da. let's do 512 by 512, 72 pixel lens RGB color, create. And then we're going to go into our color here and we'll do RGB 128, 128, 128. And then we'll go to color fill, edit, fill, foreground color. There we go. So now we'll go ahead and save this onto our desktop as a JPEG. All right. So now we got a gray texture we can kind of just bring in. So in order for this to work <coughs> the way I think I need it to, we're going to go to texture import and we're going to go to desktop here. We're going to grab gray and then we're going to change our intensity A and we'll just go to turn our polyframe off here. So intensity A is at one here. Let's see what I did here in our cavity detection. Let me play with this for just a second here. Uh, so we're trying to get that look here. You know, intensity A. Okay, there we go. So for some reason, uh, I'm not able to follow these settings here because it kind of does some weird stuff here. So I'm going to leave this at zero cavity transit. So with the gray plugged in and not doing the intensity A and B because I think those aren't working as intended. What I'm going to have to do is go back up here to cavity detection. I'm just going to kind of dial in what I see here to kind of get the look we're going for here. It looks pretty subtle here. So I'm just going to, okay, so cavity detection, he has it at like 0.4, so we can kind of crank that up a little bit. And then cavity transition, we have at negative three-ish, like so. And then intensity A, we can kind of start cranking up until we kind of get that look here. So it's kind of dialing in all of these things, honestly, 
as far as I could tell. We'll knock that back just a little bit. So this is kind of the look I'm getting here. So if you're having trouble like I am getting this matte cap to behave, uh, just put in a gray, turn intensity A down, and then do your cavity detection, cavity transition to kind of dial in the look you're getting here. Um, so cool. Here's the final values I ended up using. So opacity at 100, op uh, cavity detection at 0.7. And really, like I said before, just go ahead and just kind of dial in these settings to kind of just make it look like this. You didn't necessarily have to use these settings I use, and you have a different model, the material will look slightly different than how it looks in the Kepler character. Either way, you should aim for something that looks a bit like this using the head or test objects here. Basically, we have a good chance, we have a good balance of white for the raised areas and then close to pure black for the crevices or our volume lines, and a gray is an in between for all those flat or smooth areas. At this point, this is as exciting as ZBrush default sketch shaders could be, but there's a difference. We have set up um, the rest of the modifiers just to add a couple of extra steps and watch the magic happen. Ready to be amazed at the power of ZBrush. So we're going to turn uh, the intensity A to 3, the first one right below cavity transition. So intensity A to 3 here. Um, this simply is, uh, nothing happens, still no magic sensitivities because as mentioned before, this is test set is very important for any matte cap, but our shader right now we have is not really a matte cap and that we haven't added any image. Well, we did add an image here. Uh, so he says, go ahead and click on the texture input and select texture 28, the one that looks like marble. This is what we're looking for, but how? So let's see if we can find that. Texture 28 here is marble. Go ahead and plug that in. And then let's go ahead and take that intensity down so we can kind of match Instead of three, we'll do a little lower there. There we go. We'll do something like that. Okay, so uh, this is it. This is what we're looking for, but how? Uh, well, once we added the texture, we have an actual matte cap, again, driven by the texture. The texture is replacing everything that we set up to be gray. And in fact, if you don't want to kind of get that marble in there, let's just go ahead and import our uh, gray again. And now we can kind of dial in that line look there. There we go. Um, it's super cool because ultimately we can add any texture here to create any type of matte cap where we retain the volume lines. Okay, so yeah, if we go here to texture 40, that's going to be, we're still getting light edges and dark edges here. And if we go to texture 27 here, which is the wood texture, it'll still have the dark lines and the light edges. So you can just change this texture out and still get the same effect here. But like I said before, we'll just go ahead and keep gray. You might have noticed in the previous examples with that the color information from the texture input is mixed with the gray color, which makes the colors look dull. This can be fixed by tweaking the intensity A, which we've already done, but we want that comic book look, so we won't worry about that in this tutorial. So, cool. All we have left is to turn on our base shader for S1 and see how it looks. So if we turn on S1, just by clicking that open circuit, you see everything disappears. Um, so all the hard work is gone. It's still there, but we haven't told ZBrush how to mix S1 and S2, so we're just getting them both at the same time with the same contribution. So all we need to do now is open up the mixer subpalette to define how we want the matte cap S2 to be mixed with our base shader in S1. So go to the mixer area here, and if you want to keep both of these open, so we've got the modifiers open, just hold down shift and then click the mixer open, and that'll that'll tell the selected shader, so we got S2 selected, how to mix with the shaders around it. Okay, so make sure you're in the matcap S2 and open the mixer. Tip, if you, okay, here we go. Shift click a sub palette to keep it open. Uh, I see the mixer is a blending modes of the layers in the Photoshop, but on steroids, not only can you decide the blending mode for your materials, but you can also assign where and how it's applied. It's like having a blending mode and masking all in one place. So to explain that a little bit better, let's move this in just a bit, there we go. We want to keep the volume lines we've achieved in the MatCap S2, but we also want the functionality of the base shader one, so it reacts to the light position and has nice sharp shadows. So go ahead and set the blending mode to multiply in the mixer for S2 here. So we got the mixer here. Instead of replace, we're going to do multiply. And so we keep all the dark values and render the white color transparent. Uh, still doesn't look quite right. You can see that the volume lights from S2 are there, but they're very weak, and changing the intensity doesn't doing anything. 
I don't know how familiar you are with Photoshop, but you might have encountered this problem. You have a couple layers of different blending modes and you merge them together. Suddenly the effects you had on one image change completely. In a simplified way, that's what's happening, but it's a super easy fix. Just turn on the button called black next to the multiply here. Just turn that on. And now you're getting both of these mixed. So if we go back up here and turn off S2, so here's our shadow pass, and then here is our edge detection, so our cavity and our edge highlighting there. This will tell ZBrush to apply this matte cap. The S2 is if there was a black surface underneath it, so it's all good now. Finally, turn on your polyplane, change the main color switch to something other than white or black, or change the main color swatch. So if you want to, you can just go in here and just make it another color, or you can actually turn the polypaint there, and now you can see the effect of the object, uh, the material on your object. Looks good, but it's a bit dark in some areas. So to render outlines in a is working great, but if you want to use a color or poly paint with a shader, you should probably tweak it a bit further. You can play with the intensity A. Remember we changed it to three, which is a lot here. So intensity A, I had to change it to like 1.7 because we put in a gray, not the marble. And with the cavity sliders to find a nice balance. So, you know, change your cavity transition sliders here to kind of punch these in or out, and then your transition A or B to kind of force your poly paint colors through a little bit more. You can also turn the ambient slider from channel 1 here all the way to 100 and you can also swap the texture 28 with magic texture JPEG from the tutorial resource folder which is just a plain white texture. Okay, so that's just plain white. So if we go here and we change the ambient slider all the way here and we go ahead and just blow it out and then the magic texture is just white texture here so if you go down here Texture 28, so that was an S2 here. So we kind of had this gray in here. We can also go to import, go to the resources folder here. Magic texture, and that'll just put in a white, and that'll go ahead and um, throw that in there. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and match this a little bit better. So we'll go back here to cavity transition and cavity detection. And we'll take that ambient down, uh, oop, diffuse up, we'll turn that ambient down a bit. There we go. Okay, so now go to the document and click on the document background color to choose a white color. So we're going to go to document here, and in the, you're going to see there's, there's the background color. Just click that and just choose a white color. And we'll go ahead and turn off the poly paint here. No, we have red still selected. There we go. Looks like we need an outline, right? Don't worry, it will take us. It won't take us much longer to finish the comic material. We have covered most of it in theory, so the next steps are very easy and good for revision. The next map cap we're going to create is a simple contour line to add it to our super comic material quad shader. Feel free to use any technique we have talked about to create this new map cap. We just need something that in black and white that looks a bit like this. I made this image in Photoshop, so we'll go ahead and go into Photoshop and create this image really quickly. So we'll launch Photoshop here. And if we go into our resources folder, and we did this in part one, where we kind of messed around with Photoshop and MatCap here. So we'll go ahead and go to Streaming, Comic Rendering, Resources, uh, Photoshop Templates, and the MatCap template here. Double click to edit the Smart Material here, and we can go ahead and delete all of these ones here. So now we just got a black circle here. We can go ahead and just drag this to a new one here. We'll hit Control T to transform and then as we're dragging this in, hold down Alt and that'll just drag it in from all sides here. And then hit Enter. Now I just need to change the color of this one. So we'll go ahead and make this white. And now I have our outline here. So let's go ahead and save this. Close that. And now this one's ready to save. So we'll go File, Save As, and we'll just throw this again on our desktop with our gray texture here. And we'll call this I guess we'll just go ahead and make it a JPEG. I mean, you can keep it a Photoshop file, that's fine. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go ahead and say this is black. Outline here. Okay, so pick a matte cap from the material palette. I'll stick with the chalk matte cap. I've been using either example. So we'll go ahead and grab the chalk matte cap. Uh, copy and paste the matte cap into the fourth, fourth channel here. So we'll go ahead and do copy SH and then we'll go back to our quad. 
shader here. Where did that go? Skin shader four, uh, quad shaders. There it is. And now, uh, and now we're going to skip S3. We're going to go straight to S4 here. Uh, copy and paste the matcap in the force channel. So we're going to go to paste sh. Make sure you add it to the force channel because we want to keep the third one free for an extra effect and the order of the channels does matter. So turn off the channels for S1 and S2. So we'll just close those circles there and replace the matcap image in S4 with the one you created. So here we're going to go to import and we're going to go to desktop and we're going to go to um, black outline. And oh, we need to turn S4 on so you can see it. Cool. This image gives us a very nice outline straight away and due to the very defined crevices in the Kepler character, we are also getting some extra volume lines. Um, all we need to do here is to define how thick or thin we want the outlines to be. And if you remember, we can control that with depth A and depth B. Since you're going to be doing it one at a time, you'll witness another display of awesomeness when you take depth A and depth B to different values. So depth A is here. So depth A of three. So you're going to see we're getting thicker outlines from our matte cap here. And then depth B is at one. So yeah, we can just kind of make these thicker or thinner, depending on how thick or thin you want your outline to be. Uh, if you don't see effect of if you don't see the effect of the double shading having, make sure your matte cap settings are reset to default. Remember, this is why it shows matte cap chalk to start with here. So yeah, just go through here and zero out all of these settings through here, uh, or, or you know keep them at one or zero depending on what the default is. Um, I'm sure you're already getting many ideas with this so far, but we'll keep this matte cap as, as a simple outline for now. However, we're building a template material that can be used and reused in many ways, so it's good to know the capabilities that are there. That's why my outline matte cap and the setting I end up using are depth A at 0.5 and depth B at 0.5. So we'll go here to 0.5 and depth B at 0.5 again. We don't, I didn't see any doubling, but just in case you are, that's why you want to keep those the same. All you have left to do for this matte cap S4 is to tell ZBrush how to blend it with the rest and we're done. So set the blending mode identical to the previous matte cap. So we're going to go down here to the mixer. And if you don't have this open, just hold down shift and click that open. And then we're going to go here to multiply and then turn on black. And then I'll go ahead and uh, multiply black. And then now the other ones aren't turned on yet. So we got to go back in here and turn on S1 and S2. And now when we turn off and on S4, you're going to see there is our outline. So S4 selected, multiply black. Okay. Um, and let's see if we can... Here, S4, S2. Seems like we might be missing a little bit of our shading. Here, I'll play with it when we get there. Okay, um, add a little extra option to the comic material. We'll use the third channel, S3, for that. So select that one. That'll be another very simple matte cap. You can actually copy the S4 into the S3 since all we're going to do is change the matte cap image and tweak it just the settings just a little bit. So we can go to S4. Copy SH, go to S3, paste SH, and now we've got S4 copied into S3. Uh, the image rafter is something like this. I made it in Photoshop. You can create your own or use the one of the resources. Long shadows, rim light. So with S3 selected, let's go ahead and import from our streaming here. Comic rendering, resources, matte cap images, long shadows, rim light. This image in the matte cap will create some nice contrast slash shadows and a thin white rim light. Add the image to the matte cap, we copy to channel 3 and turn the rest of the channels off. I guess we'll turn S3 on. And let's see if we can't. Let's see here, so S3, S4, everything's on. We've got that plugged in and depth A, depth B, and the intensity A and intensity B is at zero. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working here. Cavity detection. Interesting. So we've got that here. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, a cool about thing about having this extra map is you're getting some cool shadows and a rim light at the same time. At any point, we can change depth A and depth B and the orientation A and B to achieve different types of shading. So depth A, depth B, and usually you'd want to keep those the same. And then orientation A and B. Set the blending mode to multiply and turn black on and then turn the rest of the channels on. Well, let's see. So multiply is already set for this one. Black is already turned on. So we turn these ones on here. Hmm, I couldn't see it all by itself, but now that we see it with everything else, now we're getting um, this thing working. So now, again, depth A and depth B, if you don't want that doubling up here, let's go ahead and keep these the same. So we'll go ahead and change these both to two. And then the orientation here, again, you're probably gonna wanna keep those the same because you're gonna start splitting. You see as it's changing the mat cap here. So we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and put these both at two. There we go. So now we're getting a cool look. And you can also, if you want to, change the opacity of this down. If you want to kind of just have that shading your model, or you can crank it up as ink. Uh, set the blend one black on. The reason why I put it in the third channel and not in the fourth one is because the ink shader has a dark ring that works as a black outline already, but there's already a little white outline or rim light that you can use. So S4 again is our outline here. And because this is S3 is so powerful, if we turn that off, now you can kind of see what that outline is doing. Of course, S4 here, this is where you can go through and change those settings to go ahead and get a sharper or a thinner or a thicker outline here. Um, once you turn on the outline and matte cap, once you turn the outline Mac Cap S4, it will override the rim light, so you get two types of outlines very quickly just by turning on and off the fourth channel. Cool. This is a very lengthy section, but I hope it managed to illustrate some important concepts and that you have now the necessary tools to make your own comic materials. One thing I would like to show you before moving on to the next section is tutorial is obvious but often overlooked modifier, the opacity slider. So change the value of the slider on the different shaders and matte caps of your material. You can add, add a whole bunch of other effects, and that's what I was talking about with the S3. If you want to go ahead and change that, you can kind of get a different look here as you're uh, changing either the rotation of this or also the light will also affect how these things uh, interact with your model here. Uh, one more thing, remember that the matte cap in S3 and S4 are just matte caps, so try plugging in different images to experiment. This is the fun part. So um, S3 and S4 with different images here. So if we go here to the material here, so under S3, Instead of this one here, let's go ahead and import from our resources folder. Uh, let me see if we go to like uh, Steps to Hell. So that'll give us this kind of look. It's kind of cool. And we'll also crank up the opacity there. There we go. So just by changing out that S3 image, and you could change it out and the images for any of these caps, but you'll get a completely different look in hell. You can just choose one of these things as well um, if you want to, to kind of get those looks. But then, of course, you can also go and create these in in um, Photoshop, let's see, texture import, and we'll do uh, red spidey. That's a cool one, how about that? Uh, outlines for Photoshop finishing, this technique is probably not worth a full chapter in this tutorial from all these methods described, it relies on your painting and illustration skills in the Photoshop. However, I think it deserves a mention we can use ZBrush as our main tool for creation, then we can use Photoshop to render the illustration. Um, so this I didn't actually go through, but feel free, again, let me go ahead and link you guys. It should be there at the bottom of my screen here. The ZBrush, oh, if you can see it, ZBrush, let's go ahead and change that background color. Color document back. We'll go ahead and just do a dark gray. There you go. Here's the Twitch TV. Close that out. Twitch TV, Pav Mike, ZBrushGuys.com for slash tutorials. You can go there and just go ahead and download this and you can read through um, the Photoshop section of this, which is sending the render letter multiply. I'm not gonna paint, but basically fill the layer with your base color, apply some initial shading here, which you know you could do in the ZBrush material here. Let's go ahead and, you know what? For this matte cap, let's go ahead and do matte cap metal. And then we're gonna go ahead and just go load up under material here. We have the comic style rendering folder and I'm just gonna grab the Pop Blender super comic book here. So now if we close this out, everything's set up the way he had it. So if you go to S3 here, now we're here exactly what he had in the PDF. So you can just start from here if you want to. Um, like I said before, if you wanted to do the shading with the S3, you could just drop that opacity down and you're already kind of getting um, kind of a shade built in there. But you can apply some initial shading in Photoshop here. Add some color variations, which again, you could do with just the poly paint if you want a little head start on that. Um, variations to help our design. 
uh, light and other details, color variation, contrast of the mask and helmet, exaggerating the shadow areas, and enhancing the lighting with soft gradients here. Backlight or rim light added, scratches cross-hassing into little details. Energy string, enhancing or tweaking the lighting from the energy string, and final touches. We'll talk a bit more about setting up the document a bit later on how to use BPR render passes and how to use them. So, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, multiple materials in one object. Let's talk a bit more about materials and how we can apply them to our models or just part of them. So we've created matte caps on a complex material to give us very cool results. The next chapter will take us through shading complexity to the next level. Although the technique we'll be using is super simple, if you combine it with the previous methods, you'll get very interesting results like this. So basically we'll be doing some poly paint, but instead of using color information only, we're going to be using paint with matte caps. Since the matte caps we're going to use already have some color information in them, you'll end up with a very complex looking image. To begin, turn on Colorize on the Poly Paint sub-palette, which is, you know, you can turn this little um, brush on or off, but you can also go here to the Poly Paint menu, and that's just basically toggling Colorize on and off. And choose the standard brush here, so BS, um, whatever that is, you can just go hit B and then go and grab your standard brush here. Now make sure that the switch at the top UI for RGB and Z are off and turn the M on. So we're just going to be painting with our material here. So we can just go here to M. And you know what, if we want to just re uh, replace all this, we can just go to color, fill object, and fill it full of white. Let's unmask color. Oh, we have M turned on to RGB, color, fill object, M. Okay. With these settings, the standard brush will paint only using the material information and nothing else. If you want to be very precise, I recommend you mask areas before painting, and when you're happy with the unmasked area, uh, paint with the desired material. So to mask an area, simply hold control and draw of your model. You can control and click on the canvas to invert the mask, control drag in the canvas to clear the mask. You can also hold control and click over the mask to blur it, and hold control alt click to sharpen the edges. So all stuff we've already gone over here. Um, he's using matcap chalk. Let's go ahead and just go to our basic material here. And we'll go ahead and turn off colorize while we're doing this. So if, again, if we want to go ahead and say mask out this back arrow here, just hold down control and then just mask this out like so. And then control alt tap to kind of sharpen that mask up and then go back in here with control alt and just paint up, paint and kind of clean up this stuff. So exactly like we were doing with the RGB poly painting we were doing, but this time we're just going to uh, apply material to this section here. So mask, holding down control and then control alt. And then again, to sharpen it, just control alt tap on your model, or you can go to the masking menu and choose sharpen. And then we'll just go ahead and mask right down the middle of here. And now we have a mask of which we can apply a material. Now you can do a color fill uh, with your material, or you can just paint it on. So if you control tap, that'll invert. And now you can see where I kind of didn't quite hit all these areas here. There we go. Um, so I spent a couple minutes masking out the conductive areas of the suit of the Kepler, and I want to give them a green, bright color. All we need to do is load in the desired matte cap or image of the current matte cap and paint the unmasked areas. Feel free to use any of the matte caps I shared in the resource folder and the comic materials here. So um, let's go ahead and grab that one here if I can. So let's go ahead and choose another matte cap I'm not going to use. So we'll do Reflect 2, and then we'll go in here to the comma key, and we'll choose this uh, green one right here. Uh, at this point, before I get rid of the mask, I want to apply a different matte cap to the softer areas of the suit. Bright green color in these areas here. So in this point here, I can probably just, with M select, go to color, fill object, and then I'll go ahead and fill um, these bright green, or the unmasked areas with that, and then we control tap to invert that. That's going to grab this section here invert that mask. Um, a different matte cap to the softer areas of the suit. All I need to do is invert the mask and load and select a new matte cap in the filled areas. So let's go ahead and use um, matte cap red clay and then we'll go ahead and grab 
maybe this red one right here. And now when we go to color fill object, or you can paint that in. If you got M selected with your standard brush, you can just go in here and paint that in, or you can just go to color fill object and they'll go ahead and fill this. Now again, if I subdivide, did I go back down here? Subdivide this thing, get your get a sharper, cleaner mask, it'll go ahead and not bleed through like I had it. So spend time, make nice masks, or another thing you could do, and we'll do we can do this too when I grab my um, boss. Let's go ahead and bring her in. Go ahead and the clear my canvas here. We're gonna go to load tool. We'll go to streaming. Pav mic female. Zebra's female. Hi res. So we've got the bust here. Now if you want to see the making of this particular girl, you can go to the ZBrush. Well, I do it on my channel as well, so kind of both of these things. So we go here to F, and then I go ahead and frame her. So we can do the same thing with her. So we've got this kind of thing going here. Let's go ahead and select uh, the Pub Blender comic. So anything green that we want, we can just Alt-Tap. Now they're all separate subtools here, so now I can go to Color fill object and we can just fill all these different sections of her with that. So instead of masking and painting, we can just go ahead and just do a fill. And then if we want to do another section here, we'll go ahead and grab this red one here. Now all these sections here we can go to, oh, you know what? MRGB color fill. Oh, we have, uh, sorry, I have RGB selected. So M selected. I forgot I turned that off. So green one, color, fill object, green one, color, fill object, and then as we select this one and then switch back over to red here, now we can go to color, fill object, alt tap, color, fill object. So now you can start seeing, instead of you know going in here and masking and painting like I said, uh, and if you want to select a material, you can drag from here and select. So if we want to select the red one, we do the red, we drag over the green, we select the green, then we can alt tap this one, color, fill object. Which should be green here. Going to solo here. Why is it doing red? Hmm. Think, think, think. This one's selected. We've got M selected with our standard brush and we've got that subtool, unmasked, color, fill object. Let's do MRGB. I wonder if it had, you know, it might have had a different color on there. There we go. Um, if it does have a different color on there and you want to override it, just make sure you have MRGB selected. That'll replace the RGB as well as the uh, material here. So one more. Go back to red here. Select that one. Color, fill object, MRGB if you want to overwrite your poly paint, not just the material. And you can do that. So there we go. We got a cool looking uh, comic book render going. So, and you know, he says you can go crazy with different matcaps, try and create a balance of the colors you choose. They enhance the desolated, uh, color instead of breaking it. So if we want to continue doing this, we'll do reflect three, just because we're going to replace this. And we can see if there's a skin in here. We'll go ahead and choose that skin. And now we can alt tap the face here. And now we can go to color, fill object. And now we've got kind of a skin uh, shader going on in here. So we'll go ahead and go back here or go back to the red one. And now you just kind of start keep filling in um, what you want to change in here. Cool, uh, so let me take a break here and I'll go through here and catch up on chat here. Okay, and if I miss anything, I apologize. I'm just trying to catch up a little bit real quick while we're in the middle of uh, this thing here. Cool. Is this, is it an actual viable technique comic artists use or just render characters for comics or is it just a gimmick? So the gimmick part is kind of up to you, but if you go to zbrushforillustrators.com. There's a bunch of illustrators that do use this gimmick for their professional work. Um, one I really like is the Tony Leonard one here. So you can watch Tony Leonard uh, go through here. He's doing the 2D to the 3D. So what he's doing is using this here to go ahead. Kind of The techniques we're kind of going over, he does this very similar thing. So he does this, he takes his ZBrush sculpt here. Oh, he, yeah, he even brought up this one here. Yeah, there it is. This is what we're going through now. So you can kind of watch him use these techniques to create. So here's this 3D model in here. And then as he goes through, he can change all these settings. And then he just goes through and does um, some Photoshop stuff to 
you know, it goes through here. And I think these are available on his Gumroad as well. You can download these and just follow right along. So he's doing, let me see, what one are we on this one here? So here's the entire scene that he set up using the ZBrush uh, matte cap stuff. And you can also do this type of thing too. So instead of doing outlines and ink drawings, you can also go through here and render these things out with a little bit of value. So then you can just sample through and kind of clean this up. So seems to be, uh, I mean, it's only, it's only a, as gimmicky as you want to make it, I suppose. And anything that gets you, and it's and it's also super easy to go ahead and make something in 3D and just rotate it. So if I wanted to make like a spaceship or something, say this is my spaceship, and I want to, you know, have it flying through space like this, and it's got all this incredible detail. Well, it's not incredible, but it's got some detail on the back, and it's got some detail on the front. Instead of having to draw that spaceship over and over again, all I got to do is just pose this thing out. Let's go back to our... Um, buh, buh, buh super comic material here and we'll turn off our poly paint here. So already if we turn off S3, say we just want an ink outline of our spaceship here. Boom, we're done. Oh, you know what? I want to go in here. I need to turn on perspective obviously. And I want to kind of make this a little bit more dynamic here. So what we can do is go into the draw menu here and we can take that angle of view and just crank it up. And now we're getting like a really like dynamic front of the ship to the back of the ship and you can kind of dial that in and just position this out and render it around uh, change the lighting if you want to so instead of going through here and taking hours and hours to draw that spaceship from all these different views all you got to do is just rotate your 3d model around dial in the shadows take it into the photoshop do a little bit of cleanup work and you're done so we're talking minutes as opposed to hours and hours and it's going to be incredibly precise as well like if I was to sit there and in my brain try and draw, okay, these four cylinders here and get the perspective just right and change the angle of view, uh, I couldn't probably do it. If I did, it would it probably wouldn't look this good or this accurate. In fact, I know it wouldn't. It wouldn't even be close. But your mileage may vary if you're an incredible draftsman, which I am not. So we'll go ahead and change that back to like 50. And even, yeah, oh, what's another good example? Um, just off the top of my head. Oliver, Let's see if I can find this guy. Olivier, Olivier, Olivier. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but um, if you look up here, uh, comic book rendering, he does the Hank H E N K, and so he uses this render uh, a lot of these rendering techniques to create. Uh, these comic book panels here. So look him up. And these are all Z Z ZBrush models. So if you click here, you can see here's the ZBrush model. And then here it is rendered um, like a comic book here. So, you know, well, let me see if I can find this. Okay, so yeah, here's here's the ZBrush model here. These are all really tiny images. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. So here's the ZBrush model. And then here's the steps for him rendering out as the uh, comic book image. And then he can just set up panels here that look like you know, comic book panels, and then these guys are fighting, watching the blood and guts and all that stuff. So there's the final comic book image using those uh, models there. Cool. Ray says, uh, outsourcing studio in Sengal wouldn't have been possible without you. We're using materials to train 100 students. Cool. Glad the training materials working out. Uh, this tutorial is for, yeah, uh, the, so this tutorial was made, I'm not sure what version of ZBrush, but I'm using R8, so there might have been some slight changes in here. I'm not sure what. Um, can this material be exported with the model? There is a way to transfer, you can bake your matcap information to the polypane information. It's under bake. I think Joseph Dress did this years ago, so it's been a long time. Um, and there's, okay, Matcap Baker, perfect. There's a script, or there's a um, utilities for this. Yes, Joseph Dress made it. Um, yeah, this was ZBrush 3.5, so it's been a while, but you can go to this link here and see if the Matcap Baker plugin still works. And there's manual ways to do it as well, but you can bake your Matcap to your uh, material. Uh, we didn't use light caps in this particular section, so this is a question um, 
from Yuto Art. Uh, in part one, we did. We used Lightcaps to set it up, and then in part two, uh, we just went in and started dialing in, dialing in settings here. Uh, with this effect show up in Keyshot or Marmoset, you, if you baked it first, it would show up in Keyshot and Marmoset if you baked it out, uh, if you baked your matte caps. You can achieve a look like this in Keyshot, which if we have time today, we'll get into. we got about 30 minutes left. Um, if you go into Tune, the Tune material, you can apply the Tune material and get a look very, very close to this. Uh, and then, of course, in Keyshot, you can also render out passes as well. Cool. Okay. So, where do we leave off? Mixing and matching these matte caps here. Alrighty. This is one way in which you can use the matte caps in your model, but doesn't necessarily have to be a matte cap. You can save three or four versions of the multi-purpose super comic material you made in section nine and apply them to different parts of your model. So what he's basically saying is, so we've got the Poblander uh, super comic material here, and let's say we like this one for our outlines here, but let's say in these um, kind of neck areas here, we wanted to have a different look with, or a slightly variant of this look here. So what we can do is um, we can take and we can basically like turn S3 on for those areas here. So let's go ahead and take this matte cap and we'll go ahead and do matte cap satin and then we'll load back in the material Poblander super comic material here and we'll hit comma key to get rid of that and now if we turn on S3 for this one that's going to pull this one in. Now we just want this S, this material applied to certain areas. So with MRGB select, I'm going to alt tap this one, go to color, fill object, alt tap this one, color, fill object, and alt tap this one, color, fill object. Now if we just go back to our regular Poblander here, you're going to see in these ribbed neck areas we have our S1, S2, and S3, and S4 turned on, and in the other areas we just have the outlines turned on. So that way we can click and drag over here and we can change um, the settings for this. And so we turn S3 off for those areas. You're going to see it's going to get lighter. And then since those are filled, so you can, you can, you know, if you wanted to look like this is kind of leathery and darker, you can go in here and change the settings on just that one that's a variant. And then the other areas you can keep crispy. Okay, uh, da, da, da. super simple te technique to bring your renders closer to the comic book look with cross hatching and ink effects. So cross hatching, crotch hatching alphas and polyvane. After posting a few work in progress online, when I was going to work on the tutorial, most of the common questions I would get about doing the cross hatching effect. So this is why I decided to dedicate a whole section to it, even though the technique I used are pretty simple. There are two approaches that I found to be very effective. Sculpt the details or deep crevices and then poly paint using alphas. The first method, which is sculpting the actual cross hatching on there is good if you want certain scratches to always be visible and react to the the changes of the matte caps and the light. Uh, the section option is probably less time consuming and give you great results. The disadvantage is that the little details you add will stick with the model. So if you just poly paint the cross hatching on and you tilt it, it's going to stick with the model. So if it goes into an area that in a comic book style you probably wouldn't cross hatch shading there, it's still going to show up. So you might have to repaint it. So it's a little bit more manual. Uh, this is something I would do after choosing a final angle for the render. So if you go ahead and just dial in like, let's go ahead and go back to our, let's go ahead and delete all these. So we'll go delete all under our subtool menu here. And then we'll grab his Kepler bus, it's a little bit simpler. There we go. So you can kind of see it. it's not quite as busy as mine. Um, so you rotate or change the angle, they might not look ideal. This is something that I would do after choosing a final angle for render. So once it's all locked in and you've changed the the angle and if you want to by the way you can go up here there's a couple different ways to save your camera angle so we go in here to document zap link properties you can go through here they can choose like okay i want to always go back to this angle here so you can do a custom one and then you can go through here and kind of change this and then if you hit custom one again it'll snap back as well as if you go over here to the movie menu you can go down here to timeline and you can do show that'll show your timeline tracks and now you can set multiple angles so if we like this one we can just click and then we can move this over here we can just click and then we can move this down here and turn it around and we can just click and now when we go through here you can use your arrow keys to cycle through these so one two three one two three and go ahead and get those back if you don't like these just click and drag these off the timeline and if you don't want to use your timeline again just go in here to the movie menu and just turn off show so a couple different ways to save your camera views there. Um, okay, so the second option, less time consuming, blah, blah, blah. 
So choose your final angle and then you can paint in your cross hatching really quickly using alpha stamps. Uh, the only thing I'll say about the first approach, which is a sculpting one, is that the dam standard and pinch brush work great and it's just a matter of patience and sculpting the details here. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we want to, let's go ahead. Is this the super shader? Let's see. Yeah, looks like we got that one selected. So well, this one's selected here. If you do go through here, we can use the standard brush or the damn standard brush, Damien standard here. And you can just kind of start. Uh, let's see. We need to go in here. Turn on Z as a sub Damien standard. Unmask. There we go. Everything was masked. So now we can go through here and we can start just um, sculpting in the detail here. Let's go ahead and go back to the material here. Turn on S3 and we'll tank S3 all the way up. And then we'll change our light direction effects. That one, S3. Let's change. No, let's do depth. Depth A and depth B. We'll turn that down just a little bit so it's not quite as intense. We want a little bit here. Okay. Um, so now as we go through here, as I'm, uh, let's go ahead and, and again, if you want this to be sculptable, probably decimating and dividing isn't the best bet, but you can go through here and now you can just kind of go through here and use your Damien standard to sculpt in this detail maybe. So you can kind of do, you know, set up your camera view, you can just go through here and you can kind of start adding your crosshatch lines. And if you hold down Alt, so if you, you know, go through here and we let it press in or we hold down Alt and press it out, um, it might give you different effects depending on what angle of your model it's using. But it seems to be pretty consistent here. So you can kind of just go through here really quickly and just kind of sculpt in uh, what you want to use here. With the, other uh, with the other approach, choose the color of the outlines of the material. I assume it's black. Choose the standard brush and pick the drag rec from the stroke menu. So let's go ahead and do it this met method as well. So you're going to see this one, since it's sculpted in, it's going to follow the model around. Um, the next one is going to be just poly painted on, and that's going to be just using RGB information. So let's go ahead and make this here. We'll go ahead and turn colorize on, and we'll do color. Let's go back to white. RGB color fill object and you know what we'll do mrgb there we go so so we're going to choose a black color here and we'll pick drag rect from the stroke menu here so we'll go back to our standard brush here we'll go to freehand we'll go to drag rect and we'll just bring in the alpha of the cross hatches that we want to use um, i've created and compiled a series of cross hatching alphas you can use in the resource folder, but feel free to create your own. Click on the alpha thumbnail and load any alpha you want. So in the alpha here, we can go to import, or we can also go in here to our light box here. Let's see if I have those loaded already. Uh, da, 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 we don't. So what I'm going to do, just to make this a little bit easier, we can also get a preview here. Let's go ahead and do this really quick. So I'm going to go here to File Explorer, Streaming, Comic Rendering, Resources, and we have alphas. So here's all of our crosshatch alphas. So now for those, I'm going to throw those into ZBrush for our eight uh, Z alphas. There we go. And in here, we're going to go ahead and do a new folder. We'll just call it comic book. And we'll do select here, control A, control C, and then control V. Now go ahead and paste all those in there. Um, one thing I don't, I, if I remember correctly, if I open this, let's let's just talk about this really quick because it's kind of important. So we're going to Photoshop here. A little bit more about Photoshop real quick. So if I take any one of these alphas in here, give me a second. And I'm just going to drag this in. Maybe thinking okay um, you're gonna see it's in RGB mode so if we go to image mode what you're gonna probably want to do is go to 16 bits per channel and then go to image mode uh, grayscale discard any color information so image mode grayscale 16 bit and if you save that out it'll load into ZBrush as an alpha by default when you double click it from the light box um, for instance so this JPEG here in fact I don't know if JPEGs will save out 
16 bit. It might just have to be Photoshop. So we'll do 15 PSD. We'll go ahead and save that one. I'll show you the difference here. Um, if you want to do apply all of this to every single image, I think if you go to automate batch and you can make an action script that goes ahead and changes those settings, point it to this folder and then just run a batch and save them all out as a 16 bit grayscale. You can do that if you want to. So why that's important is, uh, for instance, you can go in here to your light box here. So just hit the comma key. And then in our alphas, we now have a comic book one here. And you're going to know for 15, we have two different 15s. One is a, a PSD that's a grayscale 16-bit, and then one is a JPEG that's RGB. If we double-click this JPEG, it's going to throw it down here in our textures. We want it in our alphas. So what you have to do is go down here and go to make alpha and then it'll throw in our alphas and then you can just turn texture off. Uh, and if you want it to load into your alphas automatically, just again make it a 16-bit grayscale and then double click this one and that'll automatically throw it into your alpha section. So just a little bit of ease of use. Um, what I think he's doing is just going in here to alpha import and then if you go here to our streaming comic rendering resources alphas then you can go through here and then you just kind of look through here so you don't if you load it in manually into the alpha it'll go ahead and work um, so we'll just go ahead and grab a bunch of these here let's we'll control tap these ones here and then go ahead and hit open and that'll go ahead and load your alphas up like that so if you want to bring them in for lightbox make sure they're 16 bit grayscale alphas so anyway back to our thing here uh, click and drag over the model to project the cross hatch lacing, uh, cross hatching and other line effects. We have black color selected. We have our alpha loaded, drag wrecked, and now we need to drag on our model. It'll go ahead and add that cross hatching in there. And of course, you can choose different alphas in here, whichever one you have selected here. Um, let's see, you got that one selected. Let's do this one. You can go through here and just you know put in all sorts of cross hatching lines. If that you want to. Now, of course, you don't have to. There's a bunch of different ways to do all this stuff too. If you want to do a standard brush with a dot stroke and maybe just like a pinpoint alpha here, you can just go in here and do RGB. You can just go in here and draw it. You can go in here to your lazy mouse and kind of crank that up here. Pinpoint might be a little bit strong. Let's try this one and turn our focal shift down. So go in here and kind of play with your brush settings and see if you can't. Oh, you know what? They do actually have, you can kind of go through here. They actually have in here under the pin brush, so B, P, they have paint, pin A. So they do have uh, pin brushes in here. So you can kind of go through here and just kind of use these brushes here if you want to kind of just do some manual cross hatching in here. Just kind of go through and just kind of paint. And then if you kind of use these two, you can kind of let it bleed on your object and do a little bit of like pen and ink here. So definitely check those out. The B, B, P, that'll get your pen brush. So here's pen shader. You can kind of try that. And you can go through here and just kind of in ZBrush in real time, go through here and kind of use your pen brushes to kind of dictate a little bit more of that. Uh, if we want to clear our canvas here, we can go back up to white, RGB selected, color, fill object, and it's RGB of 42. So we go up to 100. That'll go ahead and clear that off there. Uh, unmask, there we go, color, fill object, there we go. And now we're back where we started, and then we can go back to our standard brush here, drag rect, again, bring in any of these alphas that you want to, and then you can just go back to a black color, and then you can just drag in these cross hatching wherever you think you might need it. Uh, you can also use the alpha Z add or Z sub to actually sculpt the effects, and that way you can use the best of both worlds. Not my favorite, but you can do that if you want to. So if we turn off RGB and do Z add, now you can use these alphas. You can hold down Alt, and you can kind of just sculpt in these crosshatch details as well. Camera angle and document setup. Okay, so we, we are going to talk about this. We're coming to an end in this lengthy guide, but there are two or three things you, I would like to mention before I let you go to create great comics. I've reserved these last sections to talk a bit about setting up the document for rendering and post-rendering effects. So let's talk about camera angle of view, which you can find on the draw palette. This is a single slider that can dramatically change the render of our model, but it can be overlooked sometimes. Uh, so that's in the draw menu. So we already talked about this a little bit here. We'll go back in here again. So here's our angle of view. Uh, in essence, it's a control that changes the angle of vision of the camera before flattening or exaggerating the perspective here. So if you turn perspective off, you're going to see 
if we go here, usually, you know, the head is spoke in the perspective is supposed to be bigger than the body here or the shoulder at least. So if we turn perspective on, you're going to see, okay, now the head is bigger than the shoulder. If you want to exaggerate that effect, crank up that angle of view and now the head is way bigger than the shoulder. You're also going to notice if you go to the left or to the right of your document, it's going to kind of change how much of that you see. If you do a line to object, it'll keep your perspective um, consistent. So you can kind of change that as well. I uh, find it's extremely useful when you start to render different angles of your character to scene to tell your story. So setting up the document is really a matter of defining how big you want the output image to be and the dimension of the quality of the render. I usually start by resizing the document to something like 3000 by 2000 from the document palette, then just drag your tool out back to the canvas. Um, so in order to do that, go to document here. Let's go ahead and just dock that over here. Dock the document palette. And we're going to go to, um, if you turn off proportional, you can go in here and just type in, we're going to go 3000 by 2000 hit enter and then hit resize. Um, it's not undoable. Do you directly resize the document? Hit yes. Control N to clear a canvas. Then you can drag your model back out. If it does this, hit um, Control N to clear it again. Go to drag dots and then drag rect again and you'll have to go ahead and have that go into edit mode. Hit F to frame and you've got your object. Now your document is huge and it's not showing because right now if we go into our document is already docked over here. Uh, if we go to actual. This is the actual settings here. Um, if we want to, we can zoom out. And now you can see how massive our document is. So the reason we're making our document really big is so when we export this, it's going to be 3000 pixels of information wide by 2000 tall. So you're going to want to zoom out and now you can frame your object. And you're going to notice it's going to start chugging, slowing down a little bit. And that's because it's having to draw a lot more pixels. But when you go into Photoshop, you'll have a lot more information to work with. Uh, he also likes to set the s pix subpixel slider to the maximum of 7 to get better anti-aliasing. Um, so, and you can also do uh, anti-alias half, and that'll kind of get you a preview of what it would look like after you go ahead and hit the s pix and do anti-aliasing. Uh, but if you want to, you can do actual zoom out, and then you can hit this BPR render. So the SPIX is a sub-pixel anti-aliasing render quality. It will increase the time of your render. So for demo purposes, I'm probably going to turn that down to zero. Uh, but for while you're working, just crank that up, and that'll go ahead and give you really nice anti-aliasing on your lines. Uh, although rendering is a key word in the name of this guide, we haven't discussed it much. The only reason why this section is so small compared to the other chapters is because we barely need to render to achieve a comic look. The preview is almost as good as in enough in most cases. So why render if what we see is pretty much uh, as good as we want to get? A couple reasons. Using the BPR render, we can take advantage of all the passes that can be generated from a single click, like mask, depth, shadows, AOS, SS, etc. These are extremely useful if you want to compose or edit your image later on in Photoshop. As part of the advantages of rendering and passes, we can also apply filters and adjustments based on those passes to enhance the comic look or to change it completely. Let's say you want to render this Kepler character and do a bit of post-rendering effects. Open up the render palette. Let's go ahead and do that. So render palette open. And expand the render properties and BPR renders pass subpalettes. So render properties and then BPR render pass here. On uh, the render properties, you can select what passes you want to generate. I generally turn on the shadows and AO occlusion, but in this comic style, I prefer to create the shadows using a matte cap like we did on the comic material. So basically, when we go in here to our light and we move this around and then we hit BPR render, depending on where that light is shading, where that light is casting, it'll, it'll drop in a cast shadow from your light. So see how that shadow goes here? The cool thing is, at the end of the BPR render pass, that's a separate pass. So in Photoshop, you can make that a different color, you can make that a different opacity, and you can just layer that into your comic book um, for effect. There's your depth pass. If you want to do a lens blur in Photoshop, there's your mask. We don't have ambient occlusion turned on, but if you want to, just go to your render properties, turn on AO occlusion. And then if you want to change any of these settings, go down here to the BPR AO and shadow pass here, and you can change these settings. Um, I go to, uh, over the stuff more in detail if you go to my YouTube channel here. Uh, I think it's an intro to ZBrush part three. And actually those are available on my Gumroad and Cube brush, but you can kind of see the sample videos in intro to ZBrush part two and three. Intro to ZBrush part one is free, so you can download those on Cube brush or, Zebra, or Cube brush or Gumroad. And you can also just play them here on um, YouTube. But intro to ZBrush part three, we get a little bit more in depth on render passes and what to do, but we're gonna go over a little bit of that today. Uh, so hit the BPR button to create all of your passes. Render shouldn't take long, but it'll depend on the settings you choose for each pass. Each one is finished, and you can export each pass to a PSD file. So when you click on these, that'll go ahead and export a PSD of your BPR render, for example. 
Uh, if you want a bit more in-depth explanation on the rendering passage, you can download the Guide to ZBrush Skin Material and PB BPR Rendering and the Wet Clay and Rendering Tutorial on the ZBrushGuides.com. Uh, filters and adjustments. Finally, we have the BPR filters and adjustments. I just want to mention these briefly as these extra tools that ZBrush offers because they can modify your render quite a bit. So after you hit BPR, and you go all the way down. Oh, I forgot we turned AL on. You know what, let's go ahead and just for demo purposes, I can turn AL off. We don't need an AL pass in here. But we will render a shadow pass just for fun. So go all the way down to the bottom here. And you're going to see a BPR filters. So now let's play with a little bit of these filters here. There are up to 27 different types of, or 27 types of effects you can add to these 12 filters right here. To use them, turn on the selected ones, similar to how we turn on and off the channels in the quad shader material, and select the type of filter from the drop down menu. So in order to see this filter, go ahead and just click this little open air open button here, and you can see this filter is set the noise by default. You can choose a blending mode for each filter individually and play with the slider to determine how the filter is its mass and apply to the entire document. So as you're adding more filters, you can use blending. Um, here, noise maker edit noise, and you can tell I don't come in here very often, but you can blend between these things here. Oh, there it is. So there's the blend mode, and there's the color, uh, the black that's uh, selected by default. So you can change the blend mode if you want to do like multiply this noise, or uh, I think replaces by default here. And then let's go ahead and change it to maybe screen. There we go. So with screen selected, it'll put the noise all over here. So just change the blending noise here. Um, you can choose the amount of noise that you have and also the opacity of that noise, for example. And let's go ahead and just change that back to replace here. So back to our noise here. Uh, these are the f these are my favorite filters used in render comic style. So noise is a great way to get a more papery look and to give some textures to the colors here. Um, sharpen, and let's go ahead and change this color. Let's turn this colorize off. And we'll go ahead and choose like this kind of dark desaturated. Blue here, there we go. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. Oh, and you know, we still have this massive document size. What I'm going to do is just for our purposes here, I'm going to do W size, new document. No, I don't want to save changes. And then I'm just going to drag that back out and hit F. So it'll run a little bit faster. It won't tax my machine quite so much. Not that it's a big deal. It's doing fine. Um, and now we can kind of just see a little bit more. So now that we've moved this, our filters have disappeared. So we've got to hit BPR again. And now our noise came back, and now we can just apply these. Um, so if you want to have, we'll go ahead and keep the noise, and then we'll go over here to F2. And instead of blur here, so we can get that blur, we can kind of just start blurring this out. Instead of blur, we're going to go ahead and change this to sharpen. Uh, sharpen helps sharpen the transition between the colors and to find the outlines a bit better. Adaptive, I find this filter useful to create extra sense of depth. Driven by the depth slider and a bit of radius, you can create a foggy render. So let's change this filter. We got the sharpen here. Let's go ahead and go to F3. And uh, this one's set to sharpen again. So we'll just do adaptive. Set, oh, additive, sorry. Uh, use the additive filter to create access to depth. Which are by the depth slider here. So here's depth here and a bit of radius. So you can kind of, you know what, let's put this down here so we can kind of see the top of his head here. Do another BPR. And now with the depth slider and radius, you can kind of dial that in to kind of get a little bit more of a foggy look. And you can kind of dictate. And it's using that depth pass here. So if you go in here and you hover over this, you can see there's there's a mask from white to black. For the closer it is to the camera, the farther away it is, is to the camera. So the depth is using that mask to kind of dial in that effect here. Uh, paint with this filter, you can add a bit of extra shading. Um, or a gradient across the whole model, particularly useful when used with cavity and depth slider here. So let's go ahead and change this to paint, see if we can get that to work. And I haven't played a bunch with these, so feel free to go in here and obviously play with these settings here. Um, paint color, so you can go down here to the color here. Let's do like an orange here, and then the radius and the depth here. And this is still 
still looks foggy like it's added it, but it's filter play paint. And you can get, you get, go to change the blend modes here. There might be better uh, blend modes depending on what you're trying to use here. So replace if we do like maybe screen. I don't know. Play with these colors and also play with the depth and also play with the radius and see if you can get that to kind of work. Um, obviously, I haven't done that a whole lot. Uh, reflect self. Uh, reproduce an effect that is weird enough to be interesting and useful. So you can kind of reflect yourself. And that might be that one. This might be the paint one. This might be reflect self negative is not a must have filter. So play with that one a little bit. And also, by the way, if you have the adjustments at the bottom of the render palette. So if we go all the way down here, uh, while you are while you got this BPR going, you can go down here to adjustments. And instead of doing all of these things in Photoshop, you can turn on adjustments. And now you can kind of crank up or crank down the contrast here. So you can kind of crank that up if we want to. And then you can go in here to brightness. And there's also these uh, levels down here, these curves down here. So you can go through here. I'm assuming these are just contrast R, G, and B, if I had to guess. Yeah, there we go. So you can kind of play with these contrast sliders to kind of get you a little bit of a different look. Uh, another filter you can use underneath the BPR filters here, if we change this from paint to posterize, you, so you know the posterize filter you have in Photoshop, uh, you can go ahead and, you know, we're kind of layering it over here. So the radius, we probably want to just turn that back down to one, and then the depth we can probably leave alone. Uh, but then you can go through here and posterize uh, in ZBrush instead of posterizing in Photoshop, so you can kind of just play with that and kind of get that look you're going for here. Uh, that's it. This turned out to be a long tutorial, but I think we've covered all the essential bits. I hope I've shed light on the process of creating comic style renders in ZBrush and PPR. If you've learned something, I hope you can share with me some of the things you make with the help of this tutorial. Let's see what you can come up with. If you have any questions, feel free to ask my Facebook page. Cool. Feel free to share this tutorial with anyone you want. Just please share the download link so they can download it themselves, which if you look on your screen, you can go and download that. Uh, Facebook, this is Pablo Munoz Gomez. Uh, check out his website. A lot of really cool um, tutorials on there. And then here's the step-by-step -step guide how he created this cover here, which you can kind of see all the processes. Very cool, like, pulp, pulp cover uh, magazine there. Uh, another thing you wanted me to bring up is the use of light to kind of blow out highlights as well. So if we go over here to the light menu here and we change this light direction, let's go ahead and go back to our poly paints off. Let's go to MRGB color fill object. Oh, these are matte caps. Um, let's try material comic style rendering. We'll go back to the super comic here. And now if we change the light where you can kind of see the shadows here. Um, this light intensity right now is set to two. So as you crank this down, you'll dial in and uh, then the poly paints on here. So you can kind of just, it's got some light blue on here. Um, you can use the light direction to kind of dictate where the shadows go as well as you can kind of use the light to kind of blow out so here, so you can kind of just turn the lights down to kind of dial in that look as opposed to going into your material settings, or you can crank it up like 10 and that'll just kind of blow out your highlights as well. Um, distance, 100, and you can also go in here to the light. So the light caps we've already gone over, light shadow, you can kind of play with the shadows in here. You can also play with the light properties and the light type. There's the light type. So right now it's at the sun. You can also set it the radial to kind of get a different kind of look depending on what you're going for here. Um, you can do a spotlight, a point light, a glow. And kind of give you a different effect. There's the sunlight, so it's kind of blown out here. So you can kind of use your lights, as well as your ambient here. If you turn your ambient down or turn your ambient up, it'll kind of start dialing in those back face shadows so you can kind of change uh, those properties as well. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and Go back through here. All righty, let's see, what did I miss, what did I miss? Sorry, let me catch back up here. Um, would this effect show up in Keyshot? 
or Marmor set. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, useful. If this material can be exported, it'd be very useful for animation too, since drawing each frame hand by hand is way harder than all this work. Uh, it's also true. And in fact, yeah, you can set up tune shaders. Uh, every every GDC, there's a new tune shader that's come out for like Street Fighter or all these video games where you can actually have uh, the material be dictated. It's usually, um, you know, you have your texture and then you have your material, then you have your polygons. And depending on the normal angle of the polygons, mixed with the texture, mixed with the material settings, mixed with the lighting settings, so all these things come together, just like in ZBrush in real time, you can actually have that working on your video game asset and getting really cool effects. So definitely check out like, I think it was like a Street Fighter GDC presentation where they went through a lot of that. Um, so yeah, there's usually a lot of cool tune changer techniques as well. Alrighty. Hey, Mark, it's Yarov. Hey, Yarov, thanks for showing up. Can you show me how you place the materials, uh, the gray matte cap in your lower interface here? So if we go into, let's go ahead and, because we don't need that open anymore, let's give ourselves a little bit of breathing room here. There we go. Whew. Okay, now that this is open, let's go to document, W size new document, and that fills up our screen here. And now we got our full ZBrush back. And then it was under materials here. Um, how you place the materials like the gray matte cap in your lower interface. So probably like here's the recently used. Actually, let's go ahead and close out of ZBrush. I've I've modified ZBrush quite a bit here. Open back up. Here we go. So if you did want to put uh, if by the lower part of the interface, I, I assume you mean the standard materials, you can copy uh, settings from here. So Z Sphere Edit, Make Poly Mesh 3D. So if you wanted to, you can go into any of the materials here. And you can go to Modifiers here. You can go to Copy SH, and then you can go here to your Basic Material, and then you can go Paste SH. And now you have your matte cap properties um, in your Basic Material. But uh, where did that go? Oh, but it shot my Basic Material up here. So I don't know. Uh, it's kind of just shooting things around as as uh, as we go through here. But if you go to dots, oh, metal, you've got S1 and S2. So you can go here and go to like Skin Shader 4, copy SH, and then you can go to S1, paste SH, and then you go to S2, and then you can mix uh, matte cap red wax, copy SH to our O metal, dots, O metal here, and then in S2 we can paste that so we can kind of mix these two here, so matte cap red wax being uh, applied to our skin shader here. And we go to skin shader here and uh, kind of change these things. So you kind of mix and match matte caps and RGB. But as far as where these end up, usually, usually your matte caps are here, your standard materials are here. Copying the shaders might have mixed them around a little bit. Uh, and that's usually when I use the quick pick to kind of find those a little bit easier. Uh, so, um, yes says rake could be useful too absolutely yeah so the brush that's a good point brush br brush rake is a good way when we were talking about doing um kind of putting in those cross hatching uh you know you can sculpt it in or we can just turn on rgb for this one and we'll get to go to color fill and then we'll go back to black and now you can kind of sculpt in some cross hatching here so kind of yeah rake's a good one thank you uh javier says very surprised to see you including Houdini in your pipeline. Houdini's awesome. Can't say enough good things about it. I'm not, I haven't delved too deeply into it, but I know a lot of people that use it. So I kind of, by proxy, use Houdini through them. Um, you Can you use the Photoshop export that came from PugSelect? Thanks for bringing that up. So yes, if you go in here to Z plugin, let's go ahead and load up our streaming comic rendering resources. Here's our Kepler bust here. We're going to go ahead and in this material, just grab his super comic shader here. So we've got our comic book guy here, and then we go in here to BPR render. And then we've got our render settings we've already gone over. So uh, render properties, BPR render pass. So here's all our render passes. You can also use this new plugin they have. So Z plugin in ZBrush to Photoshop. You can use ZBrush to Photoshop to send all of your render passes that you've got selected here to Photoshop. It'll pack it into a Photoshop PSD. If you want more information on how to use this, just click the ZBrush to Photoshop CC. It'll kind of walk you through all the different steps and functions that this thing has. And then you can use ZBrush to Photoshop CC to go ahead and send that all over to ZBrush in one nice compact little um, that pack little way. 
Oh, down here. So if you want to put the mat caps down here, um, basically what you would do is go in here to the material. And let's say if the material is that I want to move isn't up here and I can't drag it yet. So we'll go ahead and say, I want to do reflect yellow. So now you just select your reflect yellow and then we'll just go and select any other one. So now reflect yellow is sitting there. So now we go to preferences, config, uh, enable customize and we can hold down control alt and we can just drag that down here so now we've got reflect yellow down there and then we'll go to preferences disable customize and now I can go through here and do mat these different mat caps all on the fly um, and that if you want more information on that if you go to my oh did I get rid of it give me a second it's going to be the intro to ZBrush part 2 on my playlist here on my YouTube that'll walk you through the um, Inter uh, custom interface, custom menus, like this custom menu I use all the time. Um, you can set up this own custom menu. If you want to grab that custom menu, you can go to my Gumroad page here, page here, and if you go down to the very bottom there, you can go to the Intro to ZBrush files, and that'll grab your custom menu. Um, I'm going to wrap up here real quick, because I think it's 8.06, oh my gosh. So I'm going to last few questions if they're easy. If they're not easy, I'll just add them to my, let me go ahead and open up my streaming topics here and I can just add them to here. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so, and also hair, I go over a bunch of hair stuff in the, do, do, do. Let's see if I can remember where that is. Pavlo Pavlovich Workshop. Look at broadcast number six in my Pixelogic on the Pixelogic YouTube. You can do that. Um, how to reset the Zap Link Custom One? Okay, for that one, you can go here to Document, and you can go to Zap Link Properties, and let's say we stored a custom one. You can do. Uh, clear, press the click button above to clear its transform. So I think if you have custom one selected, you can do clear two and then custom one, that'll get rid of it. Or if you have a bunch of these selected and you want to clear all, just hit clear all and then clear. So again, custom one, and then we have a custom two. It's like, oh, you know what? I don't like custom one. Just do clear two, custom one, that'll get rid of custom one. Or you can do clear all, clear, and that'll clear them all out. Uh, Thunderbird says, do you have any plans to work with the Marmoset Toolbag? Sure. I just got to have some stuff to throw in there. And I think we're getting close. I think with the tech suit lady, I think we'll have something to work with that we can kind of throw in there. All righty. Thanks for showing up, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. I'm going to go ahead and also edit this stuff. So I'm recording these. So I'm going to edit them down, put them in a nice little playlist for you guys on YouTube. It'll be a little bit easier to watch. So cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. And uh, you guys have a good day.